uh, we have broadly split up the agenda into three. One is the transmitter challenges, the receiver challenges, and the solution, transmitter and receiver solution. Uh, my estimate will, will take uh, roughly around 30 minutes. What is unique about uh, M5 is that it uh, it has two sp two modes of operation: high speed and low speed mode of operation. In the high speed case, it uses the NRZ type of signaling, and in the low speed case, it uses PWM kind of signaling. It's just for uh, just to aid, I uh, just put up uh, the NRZ in an NRZ waveform and a PWM waveform. In an NRC waveform, each bit is, is represented by a, a positive phase or a negative phase. While in the PWM signaling case, each bit has two subphases: a diff M phase subphase followed by a diff P subphase. Uh, the point we're trying to highlight is. Uh, to analyze the PWM signals, uh, a standard or a regular s scope which uh, does not fit in. Uh, we, we need additional intelligence or we need to write measurements, measurement algorithms specifically for PWM. Next would be the burst states. All the MIPI M5 signaling, uh, both inclusive, NRZ and PWM, has this follows a burst state pattern, which means it has an extended period of a stall region, which is a diff N region, followed by an extended diff P region called the prepare and followed by the sync and uh, sync marker and data points Right. Sync marker and data, which forms the payload. Below is a diagram with uh, a kind of a voltage waveform uh, to better depict, which shows uh, the, the prepare region here, which is an extended period of diff P, the positive state, followed by the payload and sync. Yeah. Mm. I would rather use a mode. So the point we're trying to highlight is this kind of signaling has extended periods of positive and negative phases, which means on the measurement side, the on the score, for example, it needs to have additional intelligence to def decipher all these from a waveform. That's the point we're trying to make, uh, stress here. So identifying burst states of an M5 uh, signal would be a challenge because it is traditionally not available in regular scope. So it, it needs special effort and uh, new algorithms have to be written for it. Even though the measurement may be as simple as, uh, let's say, a rice time measurement, even for a, a straightforward measurement as, as rice time, we would need some special intelligence so that we can, uh, we can decipher all these states in the signal and then do the uh, measurement of property in the appropriate region. And these two uh, uh, snapshots are taken from the spec as is. So why identifying this, uh, these burst states becomes important? Uh, as as the, the conformance tests, as in the conformance tests, tests each test focuses on a particular region of the signal, so it becomes essential 
or uh, it is uh, unavoidable that we have this additional intelligence on the scope which deciphers these states precisely so that we can perform the compliance test as prescribed. multiple gauge terminations and amplitudes. What we see as an additional challenge in M5 is it, it offers many combinations, like many combinations, many gears, many more, uh, more than one mode of operation, more than one termination, terminated and non-terminated, and large and small amplitude as well. So if you see the table, uh, table just summarizes all these the two types of signaling modes, PWM and HS. P uh, HS has three gears currently and there is a talk of gear four also in the future. And PWM has seven gear, uh, eight gears, G0 to G7. And both these signaling techniques have, have to support large and small amplitudes. And it has to support both kinds of termination, term, uh, terminated and non-terminated case. So what happens from the, from the testing angle is there are so many combinations. If you want to qualify a duct for M5, there are so many combinations one needs to one needs to test the DUT for. So is there is there some help we can provide with the solution so that it becomes easier? Also, in this column, I've listed the number of tests. Okay. The HS needs 18 tests, the PWM has 10 tests. So the combinations are many. So which means, for example, these 18 tests has to be run for the large amplitude case. It has to be run for the small amplitude case as well. And likewise, to these terminations. So you can imagine the number of tests uh, and po uh, possibilities would be many. And there would be too many uh, results. Uh, I mean, we would need a, uh, slightly more help in trying, uh, trying to visualize the results we do, or slightly more help in uh, automation, so to say, to make this testing a bit easier. Uh, this slide essentially kind of lists the same thing, but. If you just see the last bullet item, it says different la lanes. The many combinations which we spoke of is for, was for just one lane. If you add more than one lane into this thing, the, it simply the number of combinations you need to test for becomes double. So we, we see this also as a challenge and I think there is a need for uh, a slightly automated solution which would just make things easier for, uh, for testing uh, finally. And uh, another thing is multiple instruments for different tests. For example, uh, as we know, the EMI, um, um, to counter this EMI, we, there is a specification to do, I mean, there is a uh, conformance test which does a PSD on the common mode signal. So without getting into details of the test, generally the PSD of frequency domain measurement, generally it is, is, is uh, done on a spectrum analyzer. So it looks like we would have to, uh, at the face of it, it looks like we might need more than one instrument for all the tests. 